Beautiful. All right, welcome to Gentle Yoga. I'm going to start my class today in a seated posture. And I've just placed a block underneath my seat and I folded my legs underneath. This feels okay for me. Um, if you have knee issues, you might come up onto two blocks. That might feel a little bit more accessible to you. Some of you might feel better. Yeah, it's good to, some of you might feel better with an easy seat, you know, legs crossed. So just taking a moment to find what works for you with posture. Yeah, just getting settled in here. Good, good, Carol, welcome. Getting settled into here to a posture that feels good for you. And just beginning to connect with the feeling of all the places where your body is touching down. And so maybe you could even soften your gaze down towards the floor. If it felt comfortable, you could even close your eyes, but that's completely optional. And know that you can shift your posture at any time. So I'm just beginning to become aware of my seat on the earth. Allowing some of those areas where I typically hold my body tightly to soften a little bit, maybe the shoulders or jaw. Beginning to arrive here in our gentle yoga session. Today we'll be working with the theme of grounding. You can never get enough of this. So I'd like you to envision as you sit here upon the earth, some roots traveling down into the earth. Feeling the stability and solidity of that ground underneath you. And as we ground, we use this as a verb, we're simply plugging in. We're plugging ourselves in like we would plug in our iPhones to recharge. Maybe you feel good just simply sitting here like this. Maybe you'd like to bring a little more attention to your breath. For me, it's useful to place a hand on my heart and belly and feel the container, which is my body. And that's an option to kind of rest the hands there and begin to notice the sensation of breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the nose or mouth. Just arriving here in the breath, in whatever state of being you're in today. Some were feeling low stress or medium stress. Some were feeling high energy. So just noticing that now, noticing how your body's feeling, noticing how the breath feels. And then perhaps more carefully attending to this flow of the breath. Seeing if you could simply take five breaths in a row with me. Breathing in, breathing out. Moving at your own pace. Beautiful. And then you could, if you're finished, you could take the hands down or take the hands at heart center and find an intention for your class today. It could be really simple. I am grounded. I am present. I am home. 
just choosing something that resonates with you this morning, perhaps around this theme of stabilizing. We'll maybe repeating that intention a few times. Beautiful guys. Let's go ahead and transition away from this more meditative space and begin to bring some movement into the body. And I think because this is our first session, I'll give us a nice singing bowl ring right, to ring us in. And we'll just begin to move the head and neck. I'm going to tuck my chin, lift my head up and back. Just exploring this. No, you can also change the way you're sitting if you need to, although we won't be here for much longer. Maybe you can tie the breath to this movement. Maybe it's a really, really small, subtle movement. Maybe you'd like to move the head and neck in some other way. Just leaving it open for you, for your practice. And making any other little movements with the head and neck. And then we'll come to a hands and knees posture. So careful for those of us who have some knee issues going on. I know there are some people who will be watching the recording later. And that is another great reason to have a towel present, right? So you can just bring that towel underneath the knees and that could help a little bit. And know that if that's not enough, you can always lie on the back. And instead of doing our cat-cow, which we'll do next, you can do pelvic tilts, right? You can move the spine while lying on the back. So that's an option. But for me now, I'm just gonna kind of circle around my wrists a little bit. Some of us have tender wrists, and I find this a really useful little precursor to cat-cow. So you could come the other direction. And then again, for those of us with tender wrists, you might point the fingers out to the edges of the mat a little bit, if you haven't already, right? So I know you already take good care of yourself here. So choosing what feels best, and then we'll begin to move the spine. So I'm gonna sink my belly, lift my head and heart, and round my back. Careful for those of us who are caring for osteoporosis that we're not rounding the back um, too aggressively. Maybe it's just coming to neutral or maybe it's just a light squeeze of the abdominal muscles in. So inhaling and arching the back. Exhaling, coming to neutral or rounding the back. And taking several more Cat cows at your own pace. That's good, guys. And then we'll go ahead and just extend the right leg long, toe on the ground. Rock forward, rock back. You can always grab blocks again if your wrists are feeling tender. And I'm going to lift my right leg up straight out from my hip. I'm just feeling this earth underneath my hands. And then I'll switch sides, lengthen the left leg long, rock forward, rock back. Lift this left heel up and release it down. And then I might take several more, maybe kind of like donkey kicks here. One side and then the other side. Just kind of strengthening my back a little bit, keeping my breath moving. And I'm only doing the legs today. Sometimes we incorporate opposite arm. If that's calling to you, of course, please feel free. But uh, I'm just, I'm feeling the legs today, feeling like my legs need some stretching. So maybe one more on each side. And then we're going to meet in a child's pose. And that could look differently for you than it does me. Personally, with my low back issues, I like a little extra space between my feet. And I personally can sink towards my heels, but that might not be available to you. So once again, those pillows could be really handy for creating a little bit of support underneath the torso. You may or may not need those pillows. It's a really nice 
nice way to explore a more restorative child's pose. So with child's pose, I'm resting my forehead on the earth. The arms are stretched and I'm finding my breath in this little secret, sacred space that I've created with my body. Seeing if I can feel my breath move at the back of my body. Taking three breaths here, maybe repeating your intention. I am grounded. I am home. And as you're ready, you can peel yourself up nice and slow. If you have the knees apart, you can bring them back underneath the hips. We're going to take a downward facing dog. So before I do that, I'm going to make sure that I'm really placing a lot of attention into my hands and I'm not just sinking the heels of the hands into the earth, that I'm spreading that weight out. I'll tuck my toes under and begin to lift my hips and see how that feels to maybe pedal out one leg at a time. I could take a peek back at my toes. Still breathing. Maybe I find a little bit of stillness here. Maybe this is the first down dog I've done in a long time and I'm feeling shaky and I need to come out of it and that's fine. Could you consider rippling forward to a high plank briefly, right? If you're caring for your shoulders, maybe you keep the knees down. High plank, belly up and in, take a breath in. And then we're coming all the way down to the belly. Maybe the knees come down first. And I'm gonna keep my hands framing the rib cage and I'll zip up my legs, right? So you're modifying this if need be. You could do a camel, Larry, if you like on the knees. And then I'll take three baby cobra pulses, forehead on the earth now lifting, and exhale, release back down. Inhale, lift, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Exhale, release back down. That's good, I'm not putting any weight into my hands practically. And last one, and release. Maybe you let the cheek rest on the mat, or maybe you create a little pillow with your forearms. And rest for a moment with the toes out to the side, if that would feel good, in crocodile pose. And really feeling the imprints of your body on the earth. Can you allow yourself this moment to sink and let go of whatever you're holding on to? Maybe if you were feeling stress when you came in, you're letting go of that stress. Allowing the earth to absorb this excess tension for me today. And then as you're ready, you could begin to think about peeling yourself up peeling yourself back up to a tabletop, right? And if it's available to you to balance on the knees, if, if you have knee issues, you're gonna get up a different way, okay? For me, it's okay to balance on my knees, and it's actually quite a nice challenge to think about stepping one foot forward, right? Maybe I need to hold onto a piece of furniture to do that. So I've stepped one foot forward, doesn't matter which one, and I'll tuck my back to wonder, and I'm gonna take a deep breath in and stand up. Yeah, nice. All right, and then I could grab a sip of water if I felt like it, as we kind of regroup here. Maybe, you know, you need to make some changes to your camera. Maybe you're feeling good with how you are. All right, so coming to pretty much the quintessential grounding pose is mountain pose. So 
So I'm going to take my feet about hips width distance apart. And in order for me to really experience mountain pose, I really love working with the toes. And those of, of you, all of you, have pretty much been in my classes and you know I love this. So we're going to do a little toe work before we plug in to mountain pose. We can take a peek down and see how the toes look today, see how the feet look today. And then I'm going to lift all 10 toes, see how wide I can spread them out, and then plant them back down. That's all we're doing. Inhale, lift all 10 toes, spread them nice and wide, and plant them back down. And we'll do that one more time, breathing in and breathing out. Good. And now I'm going to press the big toes down, lift all the little toes. Press the little toes down and lift just the big toes. And it might start to get a little bit um, uncooperative as you move back and forth, big toes down, little toes lift, little toes down, big toes lift. Yeah, and some of you are smiling like, my feet are not doing this and that's fine. Um, I was working with a client and we were really working intensely with the feet. She said, and why? Why are we doing this? Because it was really hard. And I reminded her that this dexterity in the toes is all about this foundation of balance, right? So when we can feel the toes, we can feel our balance. And then extra credit points to those who could maybe think about big toes down, little pinky toes down, and all the toes in between lifting, waving hello to this beautiful stormy morning we're having. Right? And maybe that's not happening and you can just spread the toes wide and that's great. All right, so from here, I'm just going to close my eyes for a moment and noticing all of this beautiful energy that I've built up in my feet and drawing that up into the whole body to the crown of the head. As you exhale, imagine that all of that excess stress and tension is leaving the fingertips. So we inhale, draw the earth energy up. Exhale, release through the fingertips. And we'll take one more. Beautiful, guys. Now I'm going to lift up onto my tiptoes. And I might like to bring my hands to the hips for this or the arms out to the sides. So just taking some calf raises. And many of you, when we kind of went back and forth in our emails, said that you wanted to work on balance. So this is one of those kind of every day, every day part of your daily routine. Yeah, step off the cushy cushy mat if you feel like you would um, experience better balance. All right, that's great, Larry. Moving the arms out to the sides if you like. Finding that nice place to gaze over at the Golden's house out the window. Maybe they're looking at trees. So grounding. Beautiful, maybe taking one more lift. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you to place a hand on the belly and a hand on the low back. And I'm just gonna kinda notice what my lumbar curve is doing today and see if I can even bring a little bit of movement here. It is kind of a subtle thing, so I might even wash the tailbone down, like I'm tucking a tail between my legs. And I don't want to over accentuate this, but just a little bit, because we tend to we can, we tend to kind of forget all about this area. So now I'm going to come, I'm going to bring both hands to the flat of my back, and I'm going to come up onto my tiptoes, and I'm going to hold here with this little tiny tuck. And then all I'm going to do is move my eyes, my eyes only, to the left. Come to center. Move the eyes, the eyes only, to the right. And then you can release down. Okay, so that was pretty challenging, right? Just moving the eyes. Let's try that one more time. I'm going to come up onto my tiptoes. I've got that little tailbone tuck. I'm moving the eyes to one side, doesn't matter which to center and then the other side. Yeah, if you feel your balance challenged, that is good. We, when we get that wobble going, we know we're working. Right? Maybe you move your eyes one more time and then we release out of that. All right, guys, really nice. We'll walk it out. We're gonna move the spine a little bit now. 
So taking care, you know, some of us are caring for back issues or osteoporosis. You're not gonna, maybe you're gonna take a little bit more um, awareness of rounding the back. Maybe you don't round the back. Um, maybe you keep your head lifted as we take our forward fold if you get dizzy easily. So that'd be me, right? I'm gonna inhale, we're gonna take three spinal rinses. And this is just our version of a sun citation today. From mountain pose, we're gonna inhale the arms out and up. Exhale, take a nice slow fold forward, maybe a soft bend to the knees. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, fold, maybe you let the head hang. Inhale, arms rising out and up, palms press to heart center, exhale. So that's just one, we're gonna do two more, getting the lymph and the blood moving. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, slow fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms rise out and up. Exhale, palms press to heart center. One last one. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, slow fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, letting the head hang if it's in your practice. And last time, inhale, arms rise out and up. And we'll exhale the hands back to heart center. You can leave the hands here if you like. Root down through the feet. Maybe close the eyes, find your breath, find your intention. And then I'll take a little extra space between my feet and bring my arms out to the sides. So this is an invitation for you to take up space. And I'm hugging the arm muscles along the bones, so I'm not just kind of hanging out here. I've got some engagement here. I'm gonna take a big breath in, and as I exhale, I'll twist a little bit to the right side. The hips can be free, go with you. Come back to center, inhaling. Exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, center, just moving the body, flowing. Exhale, twist to the right. Breathing in, center. Breathing out, left. Good, and then we'll come back to center and I'm gonna give myself a big giant hug here. One arm on top, it doesn't matter which one. And if it felt good, you could tuck the chin, breathe into that upper back. And then I'll inhale my arms out to the sides and take another hug, opposite arm on top. See how that feels, maybe you tuck the chin. Good, and then I'm gonna release my hands down at the sides. I still have this nice wide stance. I'll lift just the right arm up, and then maybe I'll bend a little bit to the left. Right, reaching up through the fingertips. Getting that side body stretching. That's good, inhale, come back up. Switch sides, like you could move at a totally different pace for me if you need to. I'm strong through both legs. Take a couple more on each side. So just moving at your own pace, side bending, stretching all those muscles in between the ribs. I like to envision those as like fish gills that could open and take in oxygen. Beautiful, we'll release back to center. So I'm gonna take my hands to my hips and I'll step my right foot forward and my left foot back at a little bit of an angle for my warrior one foot shape. So for warrior one, my hips are mostly pointed to the top of the mat, right? Mostly pointed to the top of the mat. And if it feels like a lot here, maybe you could adjust the angle of your back foot to allow that to happen. I'm gonna bend and straighten into my right knee, get the juices flowing. Right, and if you do have knee issues, maybe you're not locking the back knee, maybe there's a soft bend there. And then from here, I'm gonna bind my pelvic tilt and give a little tuck there. And then I'll bring my hands to heart center today. So for me, this shape with the hands here is a little more grounding. If you like to practice warrior one another way today, you can. 
See if you can find a place to gaze and take three breaths. bring my hands to my hips and I'm going to hop the back foot forward a little bit so I've shortened my stance both legs are straight and I'll take a few bows over my front leg so we'll do some pyramid bows I'm gonna take a breath in and then as I exhale reach forward with the heart fold forward inhale come up the back is working exhale fold inhale come up and maybe one more fold forward, bow forward. You might stay here, get a little bit more of a stretch. The heart is open. You might come down farther if that's in your practice. And then I'll slowly come up. I'll start to bring the weight into my right foot and I'm just gonna step up to mountain pose. Beautiful. Rub the hands together, roll the wrists, shake it out. And we'll take all of that on the other side. So left foot forward, right foot back, little bit of an angle, bending and straightening into this left knee. Hips are mostly kind of sort of pointed toward the top of the mat. And I'm tucking that tailbone a little bit to get the stability through my core. Maybe the hands rest at heart center. You find that drishti, that's not the TV screen, right? It's not the computer, it's somewhere Somewhere a little bit more grounding. You could even look down at the ground. We're taking three breaths, breathing in, breathing out. That's good, Ted. Breathing in, breathing out. Beautiful now, one more breath. Good, and then I'm gonna Step my right foot forward to shorten the stance. Both legs straight for my pyramid bows. Right, just taking a bow to this beautiful majestic earth we live on today. Big breath in. Exhale, reach forward, fold forward to whatever degree feels safe. Inhale, come on back up. Exhale, I'm bowing to you guys for choosing self-care today. Inhale, lift. And last one, reaching forward with the heart seat. You can keep the heart open, right? Shoulder blades reaching towards each other. And then we'll take a slow ride up, pouring the weight into the left foot and stepping up to mountain pose. Beautiful, shake it out, walk it out. Maybe you um, lift one leg like you're stepping over a hurdle kind of loosening up the hips a little bit. You know me, I love the yoga dance moves. So I'm gonna patent this move. We're calling this the hip rotation dance, but I love your march, Judy. That's good, you could just march in place. So just getting my energy moving a little bit. Sometimes when I do a lot of grounding, it can be heavy, right? It can be heavy. All right. So from here, that's great, Vicki. I wanna march over to Colorado with you. I'm gonna take a little space between my feet and I'm gonna sink down into my chair pose. Notice my hips are back. I'll bring the arms straight forward for a moment. Can you push into your feet? Palms face each other. That's good. Inhale, arms rise, straighten the legs. Exhale, come back to chair. Maybe the arms come down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, sink down. Breathing in, arms rise. Exhale, sink down, drawing some of that earth energy up. Inhale. And exhale. And I like to think of myself as just a conduit here. Inhale, this human conduit between heaven and earth. Maybe you take one more. Maybe I'm getting too kooky for you. <laughs> Good. And then we'll come back up to stand. And once again, you could walk it out, shake it out, because that's a lot. Chair pose is difficult. Take a sip of water if you need it. Feeling strong in the legs. You guys are looking strong. I mean, I haven't seen a lot of you in quite a while. 
And I think that makes me think that you have been practicing yoga without me, and that makes me very happy. Very, very happy. So we're going to challenge the balance once again. I have a new little balance challenge for you. It's not unlike some of the challenges we've done before, but it is balance beam with a twist. So I'm going to um, step one foot in front of the other. Maybe it's my right foot to start. Heel to toe. The arms can come out to the sides. And I have a soft bend to both knees. So I'm walking on the wire here. And I'm going to see if I can make sure that the weight is in both feet. Sometimes I lean forward. So I'm not going to walk. I'm not going to walk my balance beam today. What I'm going to do instead, yeah, what I'm going to do instead is turn my head to the right and come to center breathing in. Turn my head to the left. Come to center breathing in. Turn my head right. And turn my head left. Okay, that was a piece of cake for some of you. Let's switch sides. Sometimes the left side's more challenging. So left foot in front of the right, little bend. Arms can come out to the sides. You could do um, turning the head or you could tilt one ear towards one shoulder and the other. So you can just imagine that fluid in the ears like a carpenter's level, kind of keeping you level. Finding your breath. Relaxing into the wobble if you're experiencing it. And if you just must walk your balance beam, you can always do that. Yeah, that's good. Now finding that edge. And then we'll release out of this. And let's take a little wide-legged forward fold, okay? So I'm going to take a lot of space between my feet. And if I have a couch nearby, I could always use my couch and stay a little bit lifted, especially if I'm caring for osteoporosis or back issues today. Right? Or I could simply slide my hands down my legs. I need to take a slow fold forward. And it's actually good work for the back to stay lifted when you pull the belly up and in like this. Yeah, that's good. So if you're somebody who really has a rounded back and you're working on posture, I would say to not try to fold forward deeper by rounding, but to stay lifted, right? That's good now. You know, maybe there's a little more room to travel and that's fine. You could take three breaths here, breathing in, breathing out, one more breath, and last breath. Good, and then making your way back up. Yeah, that's good, Larry. Come back to your standing mountain pose. We're gonna take a little bendy bounce to the knees, and we'll take our flamingo pose. It's just standing on one leg, and yet somehow this becomes challenging. So I'll take the weight into my right foot, pick up my left heel. I'm gonna hug the leg to the other leg, and you could keep that toe down the whole time if you need it. You could hold on to a wall or piece of furniture if you need it. If you get here and this is super easy, I invite you to close your eyes or soften the gaze and play around with that. Are you breathing? Can you feel the stability of the earth underneath you? Can you take one more breath with me? Beautiful. And then when you're ready, kick out that right knee, get the fluids moving. Right? Maybe you could stay for another few breaths and that's great. And then as I'm ready, I'll come to the other side, weight in the left foot, pick up the right heel, toe could stay on the ground or maybe you lift it, hug it in like one solid tree trunk. And the side could feel easier or more challenging so just regulating my breath and feeling the solidity of this beautiful earth underneath me, which is the densest in the entire solar system because of its rocky mantle and mineral makeup. Maybe you close the eyes, 
for a lot of us, this left side is way more challenging. All right, good, Tim. And then release out of it. Kick that left leg out and raise your hand for me if that side was harder for you. All right, we'll just get a little read here. A little bit harder. Yeah, pretty much equal. Raise your hand. Yeah, right side harder. Raise your hand. Somewhere, who knows, right? That's all work. And some days it could be different, you know? Um, the, if you have a side that's more challenging for you, you should work, you should spend a little bit longer on that side. And that goes for whatever pose, you know, they're all, you know, synchronous poses are all um, looking to bring balance into the sides of the body. So whatever side you have issues on, feel free to work on that side a little bit longer. So we're gonna come to sit in the same way that we stood. So I'll stagger my feet. I'll drop my back knee down, right? If you have knee issues, maybe there's a different way you like to get down onto the earth. I'll balance on both knees. If I must, I could take a little stretch here. Feel all of this openness in the front of my body. That's good, Larry. Take it nice and slow. Grab onto something if you need it. And then I'll simply come to sit delicately here upon my um, tough it, I don't know what word that really means. So we're gonna um, grab a block for me. And you could, you know, take that sip of water if you need it. I'm gonna bring my feet straight out in front and hug this block at whatever sort of spacing feels good for me and my hips. It could be nice and wide, it could be narrow. And it has just a lot of work to sit up, to sit up tall um, with the sit bones rooting. So you could even kind of peel away some of the flesh there. Maybe you can feel a little more rooting, a little more connection with the sit bones. And then the arms can rest at the sides. Or you can have the hands underneath the shoulders for support. Right, that's good for you, Ted. Right, you need a little bit of that extra support today. That's good. And then see if we can take three breaths together. Breathing in, breathing out. One more breath. All right, I'm gonna take my bot to the side so if you're ever feeling like you need grounding and you need, uh, you're need, you feeling anxious or there's just a lot going on, forward folds are a great kind of way to bring your energy down. If you're not feeling like you need that today, you could skip a forward fold and you could stay seated and that's pretty challenging. Um, for me, I have the option of using a strap. For those of us who would like to not round our backs, due to osteoporosis or low back issues, this is great, right? Or if I have tight hamstrings and I'm just kind of not gonna get there, a strap is great for this. So I'm just folding forward and I'm trying to keep a nice flat back. For me, you might feel fine rounding forward. Reaching the heart forward, folding forward to whatever degree is available to you. Yeah, it could feel like a lot today. Maybe you could shift your gaze down. Maybe you could lift the kneecaps so that the legs are really engaged. That's good, Vicki. And then we're gonna slow come up and take that strap to the side. All right, maybe we'll take the soles of the feet together. Allow the knees to drift apart. If this feels really uncomfortable for you, you could always grab a little bit of extra support. It could be blocks, it could be pillows. You could rest the hands behind you, right? If you need that support, or if this feels access, more accessible to you, maybe there's a forward fold involved. So I'm just looking to feel a little stretch here in my bound angle pose. You could also look down at your feet and give your feet a little bit of extra attention. We're talking about how important it is 
to spend time with your feet and make sure the feet are dexterous, flexible, cared for. I'm going on and on about this, I know, but I do oil my feet every night before I go to bed. And it has just done wonders for my feeling of self-care and getting better sleep. Especially for this time of year when things start to get kind of windy, colder. All right, guys, let's come up to sit. And then if it's in your practice today, you could just come to lie down on the back. Right? If, if you need to stay lifted for whatever reason, I'm going to keep the soles of my feet together. And also an invitation to grab some neck support if you like. So you could use your rolled up towel underneath the neck or you could grab a pillow or block. Coming into reclining bound angle with the hands resting ever so gently on the belly. Coming into this posture, we ask ourselves again, what can we let go of? The shoulders, the jaw, all of this work, 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 just being for a moment. Filling up the hands with your breath. Seeing if you can breathe into the belly. And take two or three breaths into the belly. And then I'll rest my feet on the earth and bring my knees up. You can keep the neck support if you like. Maybe just briefly hugging the knees into the chest and rocking a little bit so you can feel that low back pressing down. You can feel that sacrum. And then I'll plant my feet down, bring my hands to my hip points, and take a few pelvic tilts. So all that is, is just accentuating and erasing the lumbar curve, right? So as I lift the belly button up, my hips rock forward. As I press the belly button down, my lower back presses down. So wonderful for the low back. And you could take one or two more of these gentle pelvic tilts. And then I'll go ahead and reach for my strap today. Reaching for the strap for some leg stretches. And you can always do these seated. Right, Larry, we have been practicing these in a chair at one point. So I'm going to step my right foot up into the loop I've created with my strap. You could keep the left foot on the earth or you could extend it long. If you're extending it long, please keep it engaged. And I'm just pulling the strap in towards my body but I'm also pushing the foot into the strap. And one thing you can do here is hold both pieces of the strap with both hands, one in each hand. Breathing, pressing that low back down into the earth if you're laying down. Can you take two more breaths with me? That's good. And then I'll take the strap into my right hand and open my left arm to the left. So I'm not switching sides yet. Opening that right leg to the right to whatever degree is accessible to me. Maybe it's just one or two degrees. Maybe you have to keep the knee bent. That's fine. Pressing down through that left leg so that's firm and strong. slowly making your way back to center, maybe across the midline of the body for one or two breaths. I always feel a lot of sensation here. And then we can switch sides. So stepping the left foot up into the strap whenever you're ready. 
hugging the strap in towards the body, maybe pressing the right leg long. Finding your breath. Taking that strap into the left hand, opening the leg to the left. Maybe the right arm reaching to the right. Maybe that left elbow comes down to help you, help support. Maybe you're still just stretching your hamstring and that feels really good. Okay, so if I'm going too fast, you just take care of what feels like you, where you need the work today. If you're ready, you could move across the midline, up and across the midline. releasing the strap to the side. Good, and then from here, we'll go ahead and come into a bridge pose. So if you have had anything underneath your neck, you can take that neck support out. So I'm gonna cue this. So I can see you guys. So let's go ahead and bring the arms into robot arms. So you're bending the elbows and pushing the upper arms into the earth. You're gonna lift the hips up. That's good. And then maybe you have a little farther to travel and you wanna interlace the fingers underneath the body and wriggle the shoulders and get a little higher. Right? Maybe it feels okay to stay right where you are. That's good, Ted. Can you walk the feet a little closer to your body? Maybe one or two footprints. Yeah, that's good. Breathing into your upper back. That's good, Judy. Maybe you bring the heels down if you've got them up onto the tiptoes. And then can you release the arms if you have them interlaced and lift the arms overhead? and slowly release the body all the way down from your bridge pose. Once you land, bring a little space between the feet. So walking the feet out to the width of your mat, and you could always do this seated layer if you like, and we're just dropping the knees from side to side, windshield wipers. Just loosening up the hips. Good, and then resetting the feet back to hip distance apart. I'm gonna cross my right knee all the way over my left. Right knee over the left, knees are nestling. And then I'll just drop both knees over to my left side. If you get here and it feels like too much, you can always slide a pillow under the knees as you reach the right arm out to the right. And just in general, kind of letting go a little bit, letting go of our practice a little bit and feeling that support and trusting in that support underneath you. Maybe you could close the eyes. Maybe you could follow the thread of the breath for five breaths in a row. being in whatever state you're in at this moment. When the time feels right, you could switch to the other side, drawing the knees back to center, crossing the left leg over, gently dropping the knees to the right, knowing that you can place support there if the floor feels far away. 
Maybe that left shoulder melting into the earth. Taking those five bountiful breaths. it feels time coming back to center one last time you could hug your knees into the chest and maybe you rock from side to side and if it was available you know you could scoot towards your piece of furniture and take a legs up the couch right or you could just move directly to Shavasana so totally up to you for Shavasana I really um, really really can't emphasize enough the importance of creating your shavasana into a neutral spine so for me that might mean um, pillows under my knees something under my neck yeah you're taking any other movements the body's asking for before we get here maybe as you rest the head you rest the body on the earth you could always do a seated shavasana too you could bring the arms down at the sides the palms facing up. Seeing if you can gently close the eyes or soften the gaze. Stay in your Shavasana or seated meditation posture for the next two minutes. Right, so stay in Shavasana if that's available to you. Right, staying in Shavasana for two minutes. Finding the support of the earth below. Allowing the body to soften into this support. Giving yourself permission to simply be. Letting go of the feet and legs. Letting go of the arms and the hands. Allowing the belly to soften and fill with the breath. Allowing the head to be heavy. Begin to let go of your thoughts. Can you rise up from your body energetically, feeling that spirit, that self? Can you let yourself rest a moment longer? up the couch and you felt like you wanted to rest in Shavasana for another moment, you could switch gears or you could stay.
back into your body. Slowly coming out of your Shavasana by drawing your attention to the feeling of the breath, breathing in, expanding, breathing out, releasing. Maybe making some small movements with fingers, toes. If it's in your practice, you could roll to one side. Gently give yourself a hug of gratitude for taking care of yourself today. Right in this gentle way. When you're ready, if you're not already there, you could come to sit. Find whatever type of posture feels good for you today. And just take a moment to notice energy level, stress level. See if there's been any change in that. And then we'll take the hands to heart center and close our practice today with the sound of one ohm. You could listen or join in, inhaling for ohm. And thanking you so much for your practice today. Namaste. Thanks, guys.